colleagues, um, um, well, first of all, welcome to today. And I'm, uh, I know most of you. Um, we've met in some capacity over the years. Um, you're probably aware that I've been pursuing this agenda for, for quite some time. Um, within computer science, uh, I'm academic coordinator for multimedia and interactive media. So I have a vested interest in the technological side of video and the dissemination of video and video technology. Um, just to give you some context for this talk, um, I'm a former Apple engineer, hence the tie-in with Apple and iTunes, so hopefully that will answer a lot of questions up front. Okay. So, um, many of you are probably aware of iTunes. Um, it's essentially a portal that Apple has that started off as a, a mechanism where um, Apple could sell, essentially, uh, music, and then uh, subsequently they moved into video and other materials, uh, PDFs, books, e-publishing, e e and so on. And roughly about seven or eight years ago, they moved into the education space. And um, this they did as part of a corporate social responsibility initiative where they partnered with a number of universities in the US um, who were experimenting with uh, video technology for the dissemination of learning materials and so on. And uh, this culminated in the development of iTunes U or iTunes University. And essentially iTunes U is a moderated space uh, for universities and educational institutes to present and disseminate their materials in a structured and moderated fashion. So before I go into the details of iTunes U itself, uh, well, I'll, I'll just give you some statistics just to where we are right now. Um, so iTunes U as a platform as of June 2011, um, th these are NAMA figures by the way. I mean, we are talking about you know, numbers that are quite difficult for us to actually appreciate. So there are approximately 225 million iTunes accounts. Now those are accounts with credit cards tied to them. So this gives you some sense as to the, the significance of this space for Apple as a, as a, as a, as a commercial entity. Um, however, it's important to note also that since uh, the development of iTunes U, there have been, or iTunes, there have been 15 billion songs sold. There have been 18 million songs added to their catalog. And quite recently, 130 million iBooks or ePubs. And this is one of the fastest growth areas in iTunes U. And I think it's very important for, for the educational space as well as, a, as, as another method of disseminating educational information. So I've got an obligatory slide here just to show the, uh, the development and the relationships. You've got the iTunes store. Students or consumers would connect into this using iTunes on their, their desktop machine, whether it's a Mac or a PC, and then they can transfer the materials over to their portable devices, um, the iPod or the iPhone or the iPad. Um, with respect to iTunes U, it's click, sync and learn, um, where the store is now iTunes U, and it's the, the learning object that's actually transferred over to the, the piece of software, and then it makes its way onto the mobile portable device. I'd like to say a couple of words on the mobile aspect of this, because this is the fastest growth area in computing, and um, also in terms of media consumption worldwide. Uh, this is not something that we can afford to ignore. Um, so two-thirds of all mobile web browsing right now is done through mobile Safari, which means it's, it's actually coming from an Apple product. Um, up to date, there have been over 100 million iPhones sold, 25 million iPads in just 14 months. And one of the big growth areas here has been in education. There are regions in the US who are buying tens of thousands of these devices, these tablets essentially, to give to students preloaded with course material, etc. Um, another um, recent development is the uh, introduction of the app or the application for the mobile device. And through my engagement with other universities who are involved in the iTunes U platform, they have all got a complementary app. So they've got their learning materials, but then they'll also have their institutional app or application um, that ties the student into the university ecosystem. 
the students can access their email, they can access their blackboard, they can access their materials, etc., in a very integrated way. And this is something I would encourage you to see to think strongly about. Um, in general, right now, there are 300 million plus smartphones sold uh, globally. And uh, another interesting tit uh, is that there are 5.2 billion mobile phones in the world. There are 7 billion people and 5.2 billion phones. So it just shows the direction in which the consumption of uh, media is actually heading. It's heading in the mobile space. So let's talk a little bit about iTunes U and the benefits. Um, it's very easy to use and scalable. We, the institution, control the look and feel. In fact, we own the material. We, we, we don't sign over our intellectual property or our materials to Apple. In fact, Apple will almost insist that we host it and, and, and hold it here, that we are responsible for our material and that they will expose it to the world through their platform. Um, it facilitates instant podcasting, so as soon as our people press the go button or the play button, it gets distributed to the students. So there's a very, very quick turnaround time. Um, it leverages our existing authentication systems. If we decide as an institution that we wish to protect some material, an example would be if we had some sensitive medical educational material that we don't want uh, Joe Public um, performing a DIY surgery at home, um, then we can protect that by using our authentication system and tying it down to specific students. Now, I'll, I'll mention this again later on when I cite uh, examples of where this might fit into UCC um, outreach uh, and the teaching hospitals for uh, the, the School of Medicine. Um, it's very easy to distribute the course content and it's iPod or mobile ready. And I think this is very important uh, for us. Now, I want to state, not quite at the outset, but at this point, that I'm using iTunes U as an exemplar. Um, when I agreed to get involved in this, I said to all parties concerned, I, I will do this on the understanding that we're going to use this as a learning exercise. We're going to inherit the best practices from all of the other universities and from Apple, and then we can translate that to other platforms, so the YouTubes, the Vimeos, and so on. Um, and we've designed our system uh, to allow us and to enable us to do that. So we're not locked into Apple, and we're not signing anything over uh, to any corporate entity. So, specifically for UCC, um, okay, I've amended the very first line here because at this point I'm quite embarrassed. Um, we signed a contract with Apple to partake in iTunes U in 2008 and uh, some time back. And um, we're just at the point right now where the systems are coming together. The, the infrastructure is in place, our minds are in the right place. And we're now at the point where we're tangibly close to going live. So um, we've had a learning experience. It's, taken, it's taken us some time to get to this point. The team, um, the University Steering Committee, there's myself. Um, Professor Steve Headley from the School of Law has been advising us on issues like copyright, ownership, distribution, etc. Um, uh, Grace has come on board uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, to advise us on the pedagogic issues and also to, uh, as a representative of the teaching and learning arm of the university. John Fitzgerald is on board um, representing the uh, information services director at the, the computer center, the audiovisual media services and so on, uh, the, the infrastructure. Uh, Trevor Holmes, our VP for external affairs, is on board. And we've also got a colleague of mine in computer science and multimedia, John O'Malan, who is a guru in all things video and interactive media. So he's on board as a technical advisor to the committee. And this type of a committee um, is common in all universities who have gone down the iTunes route. So we're not reinventing the wheel. This is best practice. Um, it's coming from the center as opposed to uh, uh, evolving in a haphazard manner. Now, we also have an iTunes U working group. So we have teams of people around the university who are on the ground. And they come from, um, recently, Inadbara, the Audiovisual Media Services uh, Unit, the Computer Center, 
marketing communications. So there's, there is a team on the ground with different skills, different expertise, and we're pulling these together to enable us to facilitate the academics within UCC to take advantage of this uh, particular platform. And we're seeing this over the recent years. Uh, the, the, the rollout of the Panopta systems, um, the, you know, the, the learning capturing lecture uh, cap capture systems and so on. Now, quite recently, we've engaged with a design company in the UK, uh, Lloyd Northover, and they're going to be taking care of our look and feel within the iTunes portal. This is the same company who are charged with... Um, uh, um, they're, they're currently working on UCC's website. Okay. So what we're conscious of is, from a branding pers perspective, that there's consistency in the university's presence on the internet. Um, so that uh, it's consistent across all of the different media. So the project has three, uh, identified three uh, distinct strands. Promotion, teaching and learning and outreach. They're in no particular order. They're not ranked. Okay, so um, it's just the way I type them out. Um, so in terms of the promotion, the emphasis here, well, first of all, to establish, this is a global platform with global reach. Um, we will also be sharing this stage with some very impressive company, uh, Open University in one uh, uh, case, um, MIT, Stanford, Oxford, and so on. Um, the emphasis, um, while we have a range of different levels of quality of material, um, in the promotional sphere, that side of the house, the emphasis is on the uh, high production value material. Um, we're putting our best foot forward. This is the university's message that's going out to prospective students, uh, to other universities, and to those who are interested in finding out more information about the university. Um, it can be used to target specific demographics as well. Um, and what we would encourage is that each unit within UCC would identify its own target audience, because there isn't one target audience. We all have different uh, emphases and different interests, so it, it's, it's up to each individual unit to identify th their own audience. And an example here where we could use it for the promotion of research activities of different departments, different disciplines, and so on. Now, with respect to teaching and learning, um, again, statement on top. Um, iTunes U and video casting and podcasting and so on, they are most effective when they are used to complement the learning experience. They're not there to replace the learning experience. Um, what differentiates being a student in a university is the university experience. And I think that's something that's very important. Um, so these tools are just modern tools that will allow us to disseminate our message, to reach our students, uh, acknowledging that our students are mobile, that they not, may not necessarily be co-located with us, but that they're to complement the student experience here on campus. Um, it also opens up the possibility of mobile and personal learning. Um, this also, uh, you know, um, from a pedagogic perspective, ties in nicely with you know, the whole aspect of reflection, reflective learning, um, and learning at the student's pace. Um, so we, we've notionally divided the teaching and learning into three categories, undergraduate, postgraduate, and then CPD, or lifelong learning. Um, now, these are not hard and fast, but we needed some uh, um, framework to, to, to allow us to develop this. Now, with regards to outreach, um, the university and its various units engage with respective communities. And again, multiple audiences. Uh, each discipline has its own uh, specific uh, community that it outreaches to. So I'll give an example of potential opportunities there. So the Department of Irish, for instance, has outreach centres in the Gaeltacht. And this will be a nice tie-in um, to uh, uh, augment their uh, experience with, with, with UCC, with the campus. Uh, Adelton Continuing Education would be another example. And I alluded earlier to the College of Medicine and Health. The reason I put this in is because this, this is a, an interesting story from the University of Aachen, um, who, who, are, uh, who were an early adopter of iTunes U. And um, they decided that they wouldn't actually um, protect their medical uh, uh, education material. And they left it open for the whole world to, 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 to view, to use, to you know, disseminating knowledge. And um, 
out of curiosity, I went and I looked at their material, and I was actually quite shocked. It was quite a bold step to take, um, step by step from a procedure perspective, how to undertake surgery of different types and so on. And I thought that's quite courageous. Um, other uh, uh, you know, medical faculties, etc., might be a bit more conservative in how they would approach that. Um, so I'm just throwing up this very dense slide to show um, the potential ecosystem that's involved here. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen here, we have various capture systems. The Panopta is one that, that UCC has bought into. The webcam is here to signify the individual academic in his or her office speaking for 10 or 15 minutes um, on a topic uh, to a point maybe summarizing a lecture or following on from our recent threshold concepts uh, uh, conference, you know, getting to the nub of a particular issue and trying to reinforce that particular message for students. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be video, so I've put a microphone here to indicate that they can just be traditional audio podcasts. That can also be very effective. Not everyone wants or has the luxury of watching video. You know, the student may very well be um, in the gym, you know, revising their notes or trying to, you know, you know further tease through a particular topic um, while on the treadmill with the headphones in, so it's not, you know, uh, uh, conducive to, to video. Um, we, I, I've also put up the EPUB lo logo here because this is something that Apple has identified and is really pushing, and, and the whole learning community, I think, is buying into this. This is, the EPUB is essentially an interactive digital book. And in this particular medium, we can embed animations, video, um, we can um, embed hyperlinks. So the story that's being told doesn't actually have to be a linear narrative. Um, there's opportunities for branching as well within the materials. And um, it's as close to a living book, I think, that, as, as we're going to get. So I think this is an important thing. On the right-hand side, we have the various um, consumption, uh, uh, methods of consumption. So at the top, I've put in our learning management systems. These uh, video portals tie in very neatly into Blackboard, Moodle, and all of the others. The consumption, then, I've, I've, I've spoken uh, at some length about mobile, so mobile phones, and I've put in an Android phone, so I'm not totally you know, tied to Apple, so I'm going to put that in there. And I've put a Sony Veo laptop in there, so I want to make that point. I'm not on commission. Um, but I'm showing you that there's a whole range, there's an ecosystem here. Also, as well as the desktop computer, the digital television. Um, we have numbers. We can tell what devices people are using to consume these uh, uh, educational uh, videos. And, you know, we're now putting the learning experience back in the home. So the students can effectively learn anywhere. And again, just to re-emphasize, once we get the iTunes part right, this for me is a learning experience in and of itself, we can very easily, and in a very measured, deliberate, and structured way, engage in other platforms. So please note, I've put down YouTube EDU, not YouTube because YouTube as a, as a portal was designed at the outset for the individual. And what, what, what universities have, have done is they've effectively shoehorned their presence into YouTube. And um, its, it's, its usage can be, and this is based on feedback I've received from other universities, can be hit and miss. Um, so, the approach here is a structured approach in how the university disseminates this information. So just a couple of words, I'm conscious of time, I'm trying to get us back on track. So just in terms of the UCC iTunes uh, uh, structure, we will have a welcome page. Effectively, iTunes is just a glorified web browser. It's a nice glossy uh, uh, application that allows access into effectively a web system. We're going to have categories. Um, the categories and the taxonomies will reflect the disciplines and so on. But for the university's point of view, we have decided to stick with the structure of the university. So there'll be the central university, the four colleges, and then also the student experience. I think it's important, and I've spoken with the vice president for student experience as well on this, that the students feel that they've got a, a sense of ownership or contribution 
uh, as part of this online or digital uh, environment. So each category will have course pages. Course pages then will comprise the, the actual media, um, what the technologists will call assets. It's a very cold and clinical term to refer to uh, a very valuable piece of material on, on, on Yates or you know, something that's, that's, that's lofty. And, you know. um, so assets are pieces of audio, video, PDFs, EPUBs, and they can all be about the same topic. So we can take a video of a lecture or a seminar or a presentation and we can strip out the audio. We can have a high definition version. We can have a mobile version. We can take the slides and have those as a PDF. And if the, uh, if the course, the module, the lecture has, um, uh, a, a, let's say, an EPUB, a digital book associated with it, we can, we can combine that into the actual offering itself. So the workflow or the, 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 the flow of the site will look something like this. We'll have our welcome page with the structures. This will lead then on to the individual. So the student will drill down, essentially, and get down to the, uh, the, the subject that they're interested in. Now, this is a very structured approach, but the iTunes portal and the internet today, and I don't like to put numbers on the internet, so we'll just call it the semantic web, uh, the intelligent web, we tag everything. So we don't actually have to have to strictly adhere to this structure. There's, there's a, almost like a free form approach to how the student searches for, and Mar Margot, you mentioned earlier about the new search system in the library is based on the semantic approach, where the student can type in, I am interested in um, this particular topic, and the search engine will assemble all of the relevant topics based on tags, but also based on uh, recommender systems, what other students uh, uh, used um, that was related to this material that you might find useful and so on. So they're, they're quite complementary. So right now, this is what our page looks like. It's real, okay, it's not vaporware. Um, and uh, so this is the, for, for the administrators, this is the login page. This is just a holding page. And this is how we edit the actual presence on, on iTunes. So this is essentially a glorified web page and we can change the colors and so on. So right now the, the design company is working on developing and refining our presence. Every discipline, every unit will have its own artwork. And this is going to be symbolic work that will uh, visually a student will immediately know that this is medicine, this is computer science, this is this is uh, history. I'm not quite sure what the artwork is going to be. There's, there's a group looking at that, and then they're going to bring back recommendations to the individual units and so on. Now, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to yeah, uh, um, speed up the next section. Um, this is in homage to John, because I've taken Open University as an exemplar of best practice, how to do this. So, John, I hope I'm not stealing some of your material. <laughs> it is specific to iTunes. So, Open University joined um, iTunes in June of 2008. This was when we were also invited to join iTunes. Um, as you know, Apple's European uh, worldwide headquarters outside of America is based here in Cork. And there's a very, very tight relationship and coupling between the university and Apple. So we were given first dibs um, in, in, in Ireland and we just weren't in the right place to, to, to scale up to that. But OpenU did actually uh, go live in June 2008, and here's where they currently stand. So these figures are bang up to date. They've had 40.6 million downloads. Um, over 4.68 million visitors. These are unique visitors, by the way. Currently averaging roughly 245,000 downloads a week. Now, a download, what is a download? We all talk about, we, we, we measure um, uh, the metrics on the web that are used, things like hits and so on. Th that's too crude. We, 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 we need to be more exacting in, in how we measure uh, student engagement. A download here refers to a piece of material that's on average 10 megabytes in size. That is a commitment. A student is eating up their own bandwidth. If it's on a mobile device, they're paying for that directly. So there is a 
real consequence to them downloading this 10 megabyte file, for instance, and 10 megabyte is conservative, small. Um, now, what is fascinating um, for us, and I've spoken to some of the folks in the, in the OU as well about this, 89.9%, practically, uh, uh, practically 90% of their visitors are from outside of the UK. This was not expected. This was a pleasant surprise. Um, you know, the thinking was that it, it would be the home market initially and then gradually grow. This has been phenomenal. And this tallies as well with, the UN, with UCC's strategy of global reach. So um, I'll, I'll show you a breakdown of this in a moment. And one in practically 29 downloaders go on to visit the Open University website. It's actually the course website in OU. So we have the ability to track, to a certain degree, um, the, the, the usage patterns and, and, and the follow through on the part of the subscribers. And by the way, that, that information is sent weekly to the host university in a nice big spreadsheet, nicely broken down, and, and where the, 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 the downloads are coming from and so on. So this is a bit more dense, so I'm going to very quickly gloss over this. There are, there are 385 collections in total with OU. Um, they have, uh, and I'm skimming here, 422 Open Learn eBooks. This, even for the OU, has exploded in the last year. Um, I think last year there were just around 200 odd, 220 eBooks. It's more than doubled. So you can see where the emphasis has shifted. This whole notion of uh, active learning. You know, the, the, the argument against video for, for quite some time is that this is passive. And it's all about sitting back consuming. Um, so we've got to engage the student on a pedagogic basis. So one of the means of doing this is using these interactive books. Um, now, they're a bit more sophisticated than the kids' uh, uh, interactive toys. Um, and so this is something I see as an opportunity for UCC. And currently, OU itself uh, uh, transfers about half a terabyte of data. And there's a company called Akamai. Now, Akamai is probably the largest distribution company in the world for networking. <clears throat> and they've been engaged to support OU. So on a weekly basis, they are distributing three to four terabytes of OU material. So this is staggering quantities of data moving around the internet. I have an interesting chart here. It's quite uh, uh, impressive. Again, NAMA figures in terms of numbers of downloads, etc. But I'd like to draw your attention to the curves. So we can see uh, the trajectory here of the downloads. But what I actually find particularly interesting is this blue line. This is a nice constant line. This is an upward trend. Unique visitors. Now, these are um, unique view, uh, uh, downloads which generally trans transfer or uh, uh, translate into subscribers. So they're not the one-off download. These are people who will subscribe to a course for the full 12-week duration or for the length of that particular piece of material. material. Um, here is a chart um, that shows the breakdown of OU's uh, um, reach. And you know, I'd like to draw your attention to the UK, where, you know, in, in the scheme of things, it's a small slice of that pie. So we, I mean, the OU, have great reach here. Um, and um, you can see the emerging markets and so on and, and, and the uptake. So this, this can uh, be very effective. Uh, next point I'd like to make is that um, there's been a jump in the traffic in terms of mobile devices from 30% to 70% in the last year. 70% of all used material is now downloaded or accessed using mobile devices. This is something we need to think about. So we probably need to rethink the whole ICT and learning in terms of desktop machines, fixed place of learning, etc. Maybe we should be thinking more along the lines of more Wi-Fi, more portable devices, always connected uh, approach to, to learning. Okay, so how do I contribute? Yep, I'm going to finish. Um, we have a website. It's www.ucc.ie slash iTunes. 
I will make these slides available to Betty and you can download read them at your own pace. So, so apologies for trying to compress a lot into such a short period of time. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'm not sure if we have time for questions. I, I mean, okay. For the humanities, there's a really interesting thing because, because uh, one of the most impressive things to be produced in the last few years since the iPad period is the Touch Press uh, exposition of Edits the Wasteland, which is a truly wonderful piece of work. Um, absolutely wonderful. And the trouble is that it's, when you say that to people, they say, oh, yes, yes, I'm sure it is. Actually, almost nobody experienced it. Um, and the point about EPUB is that. So I'll, I'll, I'll just very quickly address the, the points. Um, yeah, with regards to Apple and the, the, uh, the, the YouTube, Apple versus YouTube, or Apple versus the rest of the world, um, the, the motivation, f um, the, the original motivation for UCC was um, to have a structured approach to the dissemination. So that's why there was the original buy-in. As I outlined at the very beginning, my motivation was to use this as a testing ground to, uh, uh, to, for the university to tool itself up, to engage effectively with all of the other platforms. I mean, we, we have presence on, on YouTube, we have a presence on uh, Fora.tv and so on. Um, so the, the emphasis there was very much on the structured approach and facilitating from the university's perspective. Now, I completely agree, YouTube is phenomenal, it's, it's absolutely huge. Um, the second point was to audio. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, I'm actually an audio specialist in multimedia, so I'm with you on that. Audio is very, very effective. You have to think of the consumption, how, how users are going to actually consume the material. And uh, the third point was the e-books, and again, um, this is something that we flagged and I think is quite significant for, um, as, a new, as a new tool for, for both for learners and for educators as well. 